So hi all, thank you for joining my channel. Uh, now I've been hoping to get away from the flat earth stuff as I really want to talk about more uh, bad science in general. However, stuff about nasties in the pharmaceutical industry, bad pop psychology and all the bullshit that politicians from all over the spectrum want you to believe well all of that stuff is actually quite difficult to talk about mainly because they are complex topics and now it's easy to say that the pharmaceutical industry is either evil or a force for good it's actually a much harder narrative uh, to say well no you are wrong about the pharmaceutical industry they don't actually do these nasty things that you think they are doing what they're actually doing is far more insidious and probably even worse so yes, here is another Flat Earth video. Now, mainly because Flat Earth allows me to think about interesting what-ifs, and it allows me to build interesting mathematical models that I can play with. Uh, and I'm a nerd, so yeah, I like that sort of thing. Now, now I've been thinking about uh, crepuscular rays in particular. Now, if you're not familiar with the term, it is the name for this gorgeous phenomenon. Flat Earth has used crepuscular rays as evidence that the sun is close, as beams don't diverge at those angles if the sun is far away, because the sun's light will be parallel and shouldn't diverge like that. Well, scientists will tell you that the divergence is only apparent due to perspective, but I do not want to bring scientific theory into this. Now, I just had a simple question about crepuscular rays. Mainly, if the sun is close to the Earth's surface, would we see this much beam divergence? So what I did is draw some diagrams, pull up a calculator and get to work. And what follows is what I found. So firstly, I have a diagram where I have a flat surface and a sun. I need some clouds to block the sun with some openings where the sun can come through. And I will just use two gaps in the cloud coverage. Now let's draw some rays which pass through the opening and let's say that these openings are a distance d apart. Now the sun is at some height hs and the clouds are at some height hc. We then draw some straight lines down such that these lines are perpendicular to the surface. The crepuscular rays and these vertical lines will then enclose some angle theta. And we can now do some calculations. The angle theta is the inverse tan of the separation d over 2 and the distance between the sun and clouds. This is taken from simple trigonometry. I'm not going to go into it that much. Uh, we can plug these values in. Now first we take d as 1 kilometer. Now this is just an arbitrary number for now. Next we take hc as the height of the clouds. I have taken 2 kilometers as I believe that this is the average height of a cumulus cloud. Now next, I take the height of the sun. Now this value is not so arbitrary. This is a value I previously calculated based on observations with the assumption that the Earth is flat. Now, I then plugged in the numbers and I found that the angle between the crepuscular rays and the vertical lines is around 0.13 milliradians or 7.8 thousandths of a degree. Now this is a very small angle, and for all practical purposes, this is parallel. But, there is a problem with my model. I assume that the distance is one kilometer, and the height of the clouds is two kilometers. Now what if these values are not accurate? Well, they're probably not accurate, and I would actually be a bad scientist if I didn't test the whole reasonable range. Um, so here is a plot of the divergence angle against the distance between the gaps in the cloud or the distance d uh, and i ran this for several different heights of the cloud coverage now note the units for the separations in this gap right these units here are kilometers now we need the distance between the gaps to be about 1500 kilometers to give a divergence of only 10 degrees you would need a distance to be around 185 kilometers to even have a divergence angle as large as one degree. In fact, any realistic distance between these gaps would result in the crepuscular rays to be effectively parallel. Now I say realistically because actually my distance d, one kilometer, is actually quite large already. Now, this plot uh, also shows that increasing the height of the clouds makes very little difference. 
I even plot one line which has the clouds at an altitude of 100 kilometers, and the results still don't change much. Now look at this picture. Does the divergence angle look anywhere near as small as the angles we have calculated? Well, no, of course not. This is because we didn't account for perspective. But the key point still stands. In a flat Earth model, crepuscular rays are pretty much parallel. We find that the apparent beam divergence cannot be accounted for by the geometry where the sun is close. In the Gleason model, uh, where the sun is close, crepuscular rays are near parallel. The apparent beam divergence is most likely to be accounted for by perspective. Now from this, we conclude that crepuscular rays must be rejected as evidence that the sun is close to the earth, or at least as close as the Gleason model suggests. Now I'm not saying that crepuscular rays are evidence of a spherical earth, but they're sure as shit are not evidence of a flat earth with a nearby sun either.